Right, so, 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 what Owen, uh, so, so what Owen's just said now is, is the key to this whole discussion, right? He looked at this chart and he said, you know what, why? Why? Okay? And, and you look, we, can, we can start debating why now, but I just want us to appreciate, you know, we as financial planners, we need to know the why. Okay? We need to know the why, especially from an investment context. Because now we're dealing with people's money and we're dealing with people's emotions. And if people come to you and say, look, this investment has done poorly, what a, what a, what a, what a, what a, we need to be able to say, well, it's because of X, Y, and Z. But guess what? Retirement's still in another 20 years. Just make fuss and pay. Okay? <laughs> Keep paying. Don't, don't look at it for another 20 years. Okay? Don't look at it for another 20 years. I mean, a great example of that, and I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to your, your answer to your question now, Owen. Let's look at a company like PSG, right? We all saw on, on conference that PSG was the winner, best performing. I thought it was Amazon. I put my hand on for, for Amazon. Okay, I thought it was Amazon, uh, but it was actually PSG, right? Um, is my internet? Oh, it's because someone's trying to phone me now. Okay, so my internet will come back shortly. It just cuts out whenever someone tries to phone me. But, um, but, the, but the reality is, right, if you put like a thousand bucks in PSG, you know, uh, chances are you, you would have made over a million rand, okay? Okay, right? So, 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 so that's, the, that's the reality, but how long did it take for that, to, for that to happen? Okay, for that to happen, right? And that's what we miss. We, as consumers, we, as investors, we, as financial planners, we've got a very, very short view of the future. The future is very, very murky and uncertain, and you know what? We read all this negativity in the news and we see all this, um, you know, everyone is saying that, you know, um, Trump is going to destroy the economy and, oh my gosh, Trump's going to destroy my economy. I can't, I need to get my money out of the U.S. because the U.S. is now going to go down the drain. And No, 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 no. Come now, just calm down. If it happens, that's, that's fine. Money gets made in this game over the long term. It's the Those are the yeah, but now look, guys, look how powerful this freaking tool is. Okay, look how powerful it is, right? Um, the JSC is a monopoly. Okay, they've got a monopoly on, uh, or they have for for a large, long time. I've never been a big fan of the JSC. Okay, because for me to invest on the JSC, I need to buy a software package. I need to buy data. I need to pay this, pay that, pay this, pay that. And I said, you know what, I can actually do better if I just do it offshore. And I've been an offshore investor on offshore brokerage platforms for a long time in actual in the in the New York Stock Exchange. Okay. Now that's changing. Because now I'm trading view. I type in PSG and guess what? There's PSG. Boom. Okay. So I'm just gonna move this over there. Whoopsie. I'm just gonna move this over there. And you see on the the right hand side there, there's a little percentage button. I click that and it will show me. Holy moly, where we are right now. PSG since like what's that 2004 okay sort of around the time when I when I told everyone to go buy gold okay 2004 when I told everyone to go buy gold PSG has appreciated even with this big drop in value okay 5,852% okay 5,852% okay that's the value that PSG has sort of grown by um, and that's the message you know that has taken uh, decades. <laughs> in the last year. In the last year, yes. The net. All we do is we just zoom in, right? And that's the cool thing about this product. We uh, we can actually just click here at the bottom. See one year. We click one year, and then whoops. There we go. It is done. It's down negative six percent. Down negative six percent in the last one year. Okay. And it's like it gives you, shows you how much dividends they've paid. It shows you what their earnings were. It's a. It, the, you know what? This technology is free, guys. And our clients, our millennials, have access to it and they're using it. Okay? They're using it. Now, we don't consult on stocks. Okay? We don't consult on, on this sort of stuff. But, you know what? You're a financial planner. Hopefully you have a stock portfolio in your own capacity. Hopefully you are running some sort of a stock portfolio. Okay? Or you've got shares in something. Discovery. Okay? Great buying opportunity for discovery. Right? Great buying opportunity. Discovery's just been hammered, okay? But it could be hammered even more. We don't know if the news comes out. It's actually 
you know, what, what, yeah, made five percent yesterday, made five percent. Hmm, yeah, but look, guys, inequities, right, inequities, you've got to treat, now this, this sort of comes back to the behavior, inequities, you've got to treat it like you treat your clients, you've got to treat your money how you would treat your clients, if you're going into, an, into a share, you don't just smash all your money into the share at that price, you do it over a time period, you do it over time. Can I tell you my little success story when it comes to shares, right? So I was a, a gold, I've always been a gold bug, 20, 2004, told all my buddies to get into gold and that sort of stayed. And for my sins and for my punishments and my naivete, I went and I started buying Harmony shares. Every time I had like two extra two grand or whatever, I plowed into Harmony. And it was probably the most painful thing I've ever experienced in my life because if you look at Harmony, okay, how many gold? Okay, since that, okay, um, it's been it had been flat. Okay, it had been flat, right? So this is this is now. If we just go back to, you know, sort of. Uh, yeah. So this so so guys, this is this is my depressing story. Okay, this is my harmony. This is my harmony gold story. Okay, so I started buying harmony sort of you know 2013. Right, and look what happened since 2013 right down to 2015, right? So this was probably the most painful investment in my life, okay? Because every time I bought it, it dropped. It dropped. Um, every time I bought it, it dropped, and it dropped, and it dropped. But you know what I kept doing? I just kept putting my two grand, my four grand, just buy, 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 buy. And guess what? Zuma did me a massive favor in 20, uh, December 2015. He fired our finance minister, Plantla Nene, ran, spiked, and all of a sudden, look what happened to Harmony. Mo holy moly. Okay, again, let's look at it. Just looking at this, this bit here. We click on percent. Okay, it literally appreciated um, from this base value. Okay, from that base value, it appreciated five times. 5.8 times. 500. 5.8 times, right? So that was the best investment. That, that was because of the rand weakening. Again, the why. So I'm getting back to your why, and believe me, we're going to chat about it. But that, but that's my point, okay? Like, money is made, right, through pain, okay? The iron is forged in fire, okay? You have to temper that thing. And not just it's not just forged in fire. You pull out the fire and you beat the shit out of it, okay? Until you get the right shape that you want. And then you have to grind it and sharpen it. And it's, it's actually a very painful experience for that piece of metal, to become that katana, you know, that can cut through three bamboos, you know, uh, it, it, it's actually that, that work of art, okay, that killing weapon, it, it, to become that weapon, there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of, so, so that's my message to you guys, like, you, you can't just be limited by your infrastructure, by your platform, by your service, your service needs to actually broaden, okay, in this new world that we're going to, and hopefully sessions like this, okay it's going to make you a little bit less um it's going to seem like a little bit less daunting a little bit less uh stressful okay and if you've seen doing that you're already diversifying not just your client's portfolio not just your portfolio but your conversation gets diversified it's not one, it's not one dimensional linear it's your conversation and that's why we're running that's why i'm running and i mean this is my personal initiative we're running this invest masterclass so that you guys be, can become masters, okay? So that you can you can broaden your scope and you can actually take advantage of opportunity in the market. So again, like that harmony thing, pain, 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 but it's okay. I hated myself for three years, okay? I hated myself, but I kept diligently on my little Standard Bank app, and it's lovely, on my Standard Bank app, literally just boom, there, like you said, you put your order in yesterday on your app, on my app, my order goes in and off we go and more pain and more pain and more pain okay but i just kept going because you know what uh, someday someday you gotta back yourself you gotta back yourself someday it's going to turn so there's your uh, there's your answer owen there's your answer, right? It's a store of value. 
It's a store of value. So, so just on that, guys, I want to show you something that also from Visual Capitalist. Look how nice this is, hey? Look how nice this is. It's sort of a little animated GIF, and it asks the question, you know, why? It explains why is gold money, and it takes you through all the periodic elements, right? And it starts cancelling them out. It says, yeah, these elements turn to a liquid solid state when they are sort of uh, put in some sort of an environment. These ones, you know, uh, are abundant. These ones are too rare. And then boom, boom, boom. And then it like literally ends on silver and gold. And it says, these are like pretty much the best, the best we can get in terms of money. Okay, money. And you must always forget, uh, always remember that. Never forget that, that gold is a store of value. It may not pay an income. Warren Buffett sees it as an archaic relic. Okay. A um, couple of years ago, he had his Berkshire. See, we're getting there. We're getting there. Now it's going to stop on, on gold. One, two, three. Boom. Now they're talking about platinum. It's easy on the eyes, found in rivers and streams. However, it has an extremely high melting point. So it's not that easy. But now we go. Boom. Silver has many desirable properties of gold. It has been used as money at various points of history. Uh, but it tarnishes, right? Gold is fairly easy um, for pre industrial people to work with. It's rare enough. Um, it can be picked up in waterways and, and changed with sophisticated technology. And that's the point, right? point is the stuff needs to be um, available, needs to be seen as a store of value, and it needs to be have a limited supply. Okay, at the moment, you know, the, and, and it is this, the, the big argument for gold long term is like there is an unlimited limited supply of money, of liquidity, that's artificially driving up asset prices, right? The minute those liquidity taps get turned off, all of a sudden now the supply is now shrinking and limited, okay? Gold, it's got a fixed supply. There's only just so much gold, unless you know we get smashed by a whole bunch of meteorites and they bring some gold from outer space um, into our uh, <laughs> into our world again. But there's only so much gold on the planet, right? So it is a finite resource, and that's why Bitcoin has done what it's done, because there is a finite a number or finite processing power that can basically mine that Bitcoin, and that's why it's sort of going. Um, where it is going and I would put it to you guys you know me I was sort of I've always had a, a, a I was always a bit sort of cautious around Bitcoin but within reason within good reason okay we saw what happened um, with the with the Bitcoin crash right but I can tell you now Bitcoin's not going away it's 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 version one okay version 0.1 whatever you want to call it I'd say you know in the in the next hundred years all currencies are going to be digital why do you think uh, Facebook has moved into uh, into crypto? Okay, whoopsie, that's LinkedIn. Why do you think Facebook has moved into crypto? Uh, where is that one? It's such a nice infographic. Okay, so here you're looking at tech revenues. You see a Apple, they make all their revenue from the iPhone. So already I can see, whoa, Apple's in trouble because you know what, there was a leak yesterday. So the Apple iPhone is not going to be, the new one's not going to nearly be as good as well, the Samsung phones or the Huawei well, phones. So is that, are Apple diversified? No, not really, okay? We're looking at Amazon. Amazon, very well diversified business. A lot of revenue, okay? Um, and an interesting thing about uh, Amazon, you know, they, 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 their scale is so big and they, they, they create so much um, in the distribution. They can actually operate their business profitable at a, like a zero, like a two cents, okay, two cents uh, profit on each package. Mm -hmm. They can run a they can run a profitable business on two cents profit on one package. Correct, yeah. So the volume. the volume, the scale, right, the scale. And make no mistake, these guys are on a on a track for world domination. They come into every economy on the planet. Um, but again, then what's the alternative? Alibaba. Alibaba. Okay. Alibaba. Okay. They're doing the same. So now, in the past, as you saw these big wars between governments you know, fighting for economic supremacy, these tech giants are going to literally um, go go at it. And you know what? At the end of the day, who wins? You and me. The consumer wins because it drives down prices. It unlocks value. It, it enables us to, to, to get the best technology at the best price. And, you know, for me, you want to know a booming industry that to get into, okay? When it becomes affordable, solar, renewable, anything that can generate energy is going to be an incredible industry when it becomes affordable because you know what it scales infinitely it scales infinitely if it's if it's cost effective enough people are going to grab it they're going to take it they can put it on their roof and it's going to generate free energy for them 
that is a massive, massive growth industry. But right now, the economics of it are still a little bit skewed. I mean, any of you guys have solar at home, it's quite expensive to set up a solar array, right? But that's also because we're in a backwater third world. To get that 4G or 5G or 5G, yeah, that's another issue, right? So that's another issue. Hmm. So, 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 guys, I'll be honest, with you, and what is that around? That's around connectivity, the speed of connectivity. I can tell you now, uh, uh, space broadband, satellite broadband, it's going to smash 5G. It's going to smash it. It's that, that, that potentially, okay? Or it could be feeding into those 5G towers and those 5G towers could maybe amplify the signal and push it out, okay? Um, you will sort of have to have sort of centralized distribution for broadband right now. But eventually, from space, they'll just so beam us, Oh, now guess what? Guess, guess, guess how that growth yes. is now going to be unlocked, right? Because now all of a sudden I can do payments on my phone. Alipay, WePay, okay, PayPal. I can do I can do payments it on my phone. Can be, it can be commerce. I can yeah. do, so, so guys, the future technology, technology guys, technology is enabling the future. The future is going to be bright, and you guys need to sit with your clients and say, you know what? Yes, right now it looks like shit, and yes, the market is probably going to fall because there's been an irrational exuberance, too much spending on borrowed money. Okay, there's so much debt in the world. There is so much freaking debt in the world, okay, that they actually did this infographic on who is the most indebted in the world. Visual capitalist, again, okay? Visual capital. Japan is the most indebted. China is the most indebted. That's dangerous for us because China is our primary export partner, okay? So, that's what they say, right? That's what they say. But now the uh, war is also problematic because now what am I doing? I need to borrow. I need to monetize more debt and I need to borrow. Uh, to, to build my tanks and my infantry and wars are expensive, right? Do you think right? Trump wants a war? He does. Uh, look, I... I America wants a war every time. Yeah, it's... it's it, to keep the economy going. To keep the economy oh, going. Yeah, but, yeah, I, but I, I can tell you no, now, no their, their no military point. supremacy um, is, 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 is well... Can be challenged, right? I don't know if it can quite be challenged yeah. on an even footing. I mean, they really are... They are incredibly powerful in terms of military. But why is Japan... They, they, they broke. <laughs> Japan are broke. Yeah, yeah, that's the only reason why they're able to go. They, they got their savings. That's, they, so, so you look at like, you look at like prescribed assets, right? Okay. In Japan, it's prescribed assets because that savings population have to buy bonds. It's like mandated. So that's the only thing that, that, that savings that the Japanese people have goes into JGBs, Japanese government bonds, and that keeps the Taps flowing, right? Um, but now, just so, 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 just on this issue of war, guys, the war of the future, okay? Like I said to you, it's those tech wars, okay? It's cyber. War is happening right now, okay? China have like engaged in IP theft, right? So they literally hacked stuff and they stole IP and they're copying and so there, there is, there's wars happening, right? We just don't see it, okay? It's in the ether. That's why okay. they're doing what they're doing. Correct. They're trying, they're trying, to, they're trying to get in on the, the, they're trying to get in on the IP, the IP game, right? Yeah, no, 100%. We can, we can someone, say. Someone said, hey, guys, can have an idea for you? I got an idea. Let's just, let's just do what they do. Yeah. So, so. How can we were talking about it earlier. He's saying he literally might win that battle. It can't be. It just can't be. That's oh. an interesting one. This isn't a two double A for a, a credit crunch. So, yeah. So, we've got warning. But, so the risk is, guys, the risk is. And, and I think, you know, in this last half an hour, I'm going to walk through, because I've shown a lot of stuff, but I actually haven't, I feel like I haven't given you, I haven't given you a roadmap. I've shown, and, and, and maybe this is sort of version one or, or uh, session one. one, okay, mm -hmm. part one, where I just show you what's possible. Warming up. I'm yep. warming you up, and then we're gonna systematically every sort of two months or whatever, every quarter meet and we go and we sort of build on this. Build. <laughs> and, and I think in the States, this time we should maybe meet for breakfast. Uh, no, I'll tell you what, I'll do it uh, definitely. Definitely. Carry on. Yeah, but I'll, yeah, but I'll only feed you guys after we've done the work. Okay. You have to stick around. You have to stick around. Okay, so, so this is an interesting one, and this is the one I'll sort of, um, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of just, you know, put it out there. But you know, the reality is, 
Declining demographics, right? We saw it uh, at the Discovery Summit with Michael Power. It was a phenomenal... Um, no. When did Michael Power speak to us? At the, summit. at the summit. Okay. So, yeah, Michael Power talks a lot from Investec. He talks a lot about this idea of an uh, aging population and not enough births. Okay. So, no one to sort of well, keep bringing... No, no. We, we luckily, we, we, we actually are going to be able to come to the world's aid in that regard. And China, China Power adopted the two... Way child policy now so all uh, the, yeah yeah so now you, yeah. you you there's no longer one child in China you now can have two yeah one more you can have a friend okay you can have a buddy so it's probably gonna be a, like, probably gonna be a nicer you know but a little bit more social you know <laughs> not so serious no I'm not being mean but 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 can you see so yeah they they all are hey so hopefully, hopefully I've shown you guys that that these these um, infographics on visual capitalist is is well worth Incredible. some time. You know, you're chilling on the couch on the weekend and you've got your iPad on your lap or your tablet or something, and you just you just flip through. You go, oh, that's interesting. And if you don't get it, you know, on, this looks interesting. School. Help me. And if I don't get it, I'll go. You know what? Uh, Samantha Hotard at Investec, please explain to me what's happening here and then I can come back to you. You know, so so that that's really um, the service. Okay, that's the service. But you guys have to do the work, right? You, you have to question why. Owen. You have to question why. Why are things happening? So now we've I've shown you a bunch of cool stuff. We're gonna walk through the why. And the how. And the what. And the what. What am I gonna do? What am I going to do? Okay, so this is the this is the reality, guys. This is the reality. Gold is currently priced um, at at the highest levels in rand that it has been, okay, yeah. ever as far as I can. I think it might. I don't know. I don't have data that goes that far out, but in my um, yeah, I should maybe try find more data on it. But it's it's, it's like that Second World War sort of. I think I think one, back there. It, I think it, it could have had a a, a higher price. But now let, let's answer the question. It okay. So we all. In rand. I don't. I don't, also don't think it's ever been. But the, and, and, and the interesting about gold, guys, it, it retains its value in real terms. Okay. Actually retains its value. It's one of the only assets that actually appreciates with inflation, sort of cent for cent, because it's money. Okay, it's money. It retains its purchasing power over time. Sometimes it'll be a little bit less, sometimes it'll be a little bit less, more, but that's relative, relative value. Okay, right now it's at good value. It's like, it's, it's well, I'd say good value for people that are holding. Mm. So if you were selling now, you, you would make some money. Okay, you would make some money. So let's unpack why. So, oh, nice thing about this tool, right? So you go XAUZAR, golden rands, okay, golden rands. Um, if you want to know the ticker symbol for something, you can shoot me a WhatsApp. Say, hey Bernard, I want to look at, you know, um, uh, 10 year South African bonds. Help me with the ticker symbol. I, I'll, I'll send you the ticker symbol. Okay, if you just want to look at it for your own. But the nice thing about this tool now, there's a little plus button here. It says compare. If I click on compare, it's going to open up a little dialog box here. And I can now start throwing some more information on you. So let's go Rand Dollar. Okay. So USD ZAR, and very crucially here, I'm keeping the denominator the same. Okay, you remember uh, like maths, right? You mm -hmm. keep the denominator the same, they sort of cancel each other out, right? So I'm keeping the denominator the same, okay? And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put another sort of squiggly line up here. Okay, and you can see now, this is so what we're looking at now, and I'm I'm just gonna right click here, and I'm gonna bring this under visual order. I'm gonna bring it to the front so you can see it nice and clear. That little orange worm, okay, is the Rand Dollar Exchange rate, okay? And you can see what, they're both starting from the same point, okay? And what we're showing is relative performance. So how much has the Rand Dollar appreciated or depreciated in percentage terms versus each other, okay? Versus the gold uh, Rand price, okay? And you can see... Um, Rand dollar has appreciated 17% in value, so the, the Rand is weakened by 17%, okay? But the gold price in Rands, again, the Rand is weakened relative to gold, right? The Rand is weakened relative to gold. Gold price in Rands is up 57%, okay, on a relative basis. But now if I want to do analysis, 
I want to put them on top of each other because sometimes this this little graph, this little orange one, is going to be the small little thing. Because I mean, if you put this up against Bitcoin, Bitcoin would have done like five thousand percent return, and like you look at like the all Z, and it's maybe like ten percent. The scale is is not nice. Okay, so I come here to the the orange squiggly, I right click on it, and I go pin to scale, and I say pin to new scale, left scale, and as soon as I do that, now I've got that return okay on the left hand side all right and i've got the gold return so i've got the rand dollar return on the left hand side on the right hand side i've got the gold dollar return and i can see very clearly hey lynette they move in vogue okay they move in lockstep okay they move so in lockstep but then be the next 40 percent return or yeah the 40 percent return in in, in rands rand. If you bought your, if you bought gold in uh, 2015, okay, in dollars. If you bought gold in dollars in 2015 using rands, so you think about it as an asset swap, okay, rand out, rand in. There is a 45% return, okay, in rands. Now, that's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. It's so one of the, it's probably the best performing asset. Uh, one, uh, not the best, but one of the best. Okay, certainly one of the best. And you can see it's very closely correlated within reason to the Rand dollar exchange. So what does that mean now for my masterclass uh, application? It means that if the Rand is showing good value, okay, I can now go out and buy diversified assets that are maybe priced in foreign currency. So if my Rand is showing good value in dollars, okay, versus dollars, I can now go and buy assets denominated in dollars that are maybe different, it's cheaper, okay to buy those assets first and foremost okay and if those assets are good assets okay those assets can actually do very well for me over the long term in terms of the asset swap abilities okay if i didn't want to do asset swap what i would do is i would then do something different i take my money offshore and convert it into dollars i take those dollars and i buy gold and i'd keep then I'd move that gold in dollars and I'd make that call in dollars. And we can have that debate as well because then when we click here and we go compare, we can go compare and we can say what was XAU, which is the ticker symbol for gold, versus USD. So now we're looking at gold. Because when markets are failing, that's the place the world is meant to act. Yeah, so now, so, now, so now we're looking at gold price. And, and now you see, okay, now it's not looking so lacquer because it's blue on blue. So I can click here, there's a little cog here, or I just right click and I go to properties or set settings beg your pardon and I can go to style and I can change the blue to pink okay nice contrasting fuchsia pink okay and again I want to bring this one to the front visual auto bring to the front so I can see it nicely and you can see already okay that uh, there's great correlation here there's great correlation, obviously, in the price of gold. There, the price of gold relative to dollars has been appreciating. Okay, this little pink worm. Okay, but now also you can see my scales messed up because now I'm comparing dollar gold to rand gold because I haven't moved the scale. Dollar gold has performed at 31%. Rand gold has performed, well, that's in dollars, right? Yeah. That's a different story now. 31% in dollars. That's then I've got to start factoring dollar inflation. So where have I actually would it, where will I actually have done better in this equation? Dollar. Correct. The dollar inflation is two. Dollar inflation is two. So just things to think about. How can I utilize this now? Well, when I pay it out, maybe I should just pay it out into dollars. Maybe I should just pay it out into dollars. I should sell my gold and don't take rand for it. Give me dollar for it because now I've I've actually I've, I'm benefiting from. U.S. inflation. If I take the dollars, so are you with me? Yes. Oh. Yeah, they're sophisticated investors. Of course, they're doing that. Of course, they're doing that. But the problem, the net, the problem with the fund management uh, a unit trust, right? It's denominated in uh, currency. Okay, unit trust for the most part. Um, local unit trusts are denominated in rand. So you take asset swap whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. And that's the risk. That's the risk. We think we're getting the asset in dollars. But we're getting the asset in rands and we're beholden to inflation in rands. But luckily, gold, okay, is an inflation hedge. Okay, so actually, you know, 45% relative to 31% in dollars, you can see where the inflation hedge is now starting to pick up, hey? 
And that's, that's sort of what I want to show you guys, is the power of understanding simple economic indicators, okay? And how, in, in relative terms, those in economic indicators impact outcome. Okay, and if you do that, you're able to now educate. You're able to educate your clients. Okay, you're able to create a platform where you can put a chart up like this on a blog or a website or your own website. Hopefully, you guys all have a website. Okay, hopefully. If you don't, if you don't, yeah, LinkedIn is fine, guys. On LinkedIn, it's a social platform. LinkedIn is easy. Okay, LinkedIn is easy and it's a beautiful platform. It's actually, and I spend way too much time on it for my sins. Yeah, it's pretty time on it, that's my problem. It's yeah. there, it's sitting there gathering dust. Now, now Doug, but you, I don't you, mind it or use it you, you, you put something like this on LinkedIn and you, you put a nice little story behind it, even though there are cleverer people out there that know more than you, okay? That will say to you, oh, you know, what you're explaining is like child's play, really. Because what I've explained right now, it's like a fund manager will look at this and go like, shrug and say, oh, yeah, whatever. You know, I know this. Like, tell me something, I don't know. It. Yeah. Tell me something, I don't know. I'll tell you what, your clients don't know it. Mm -hmm. Your clients don't know it. You don't know it. And in this, in this industry, okay, there's a lot of hubris. There's a lot of arrogance. There's a lot of pride, okay? Um, you've got to remember that your clients are not sophisticated. You're millennial. They're not sophisticated. But what do they want? They want a diverse spread of assets. They don't want to be constrained. They want to know that the sky's the limit. That open architecture, technology will enable the conversation. And you know what? I'm not going to be limited. So don't limit yourself. Don't limit your clients by being limited. Okay? By being limited. Right? And if you want help in broadening your horizon, come speak to me. I can help you. Okay? But now let's look at it quickly. If I right click here, I can now pin it to a new scale again. And I can now pin it to... A new left scale and you can see now they sort of move and now you see there there's the there's the dollar return okay um, and there's the the, uh, the the rand return okay and it's a it's a lovely it's a lovely software package because it's dynamic I can zoom in zoom out and everything sort of changes okay you just need to put up with the adverts every now and again you can pay for this by the way it costs it's quite expensive it costs about thirty dollars a month so you can pay for it to not be bugged by ads and what have you, but I'll put up with ads. I mean, 30 bucks is quite a bit. 30 bucks is 30 bucks. Um, 30 but dollars. 30 US dollars, yeah. But you know what? Having said that, they have um, uh, every, and this is, this is like, this is another thing that you should maybe mention, or just remember, you guys all heard of Black Friday, mm -hmm. and you all heard of Cyber Monday. Mm -hmm. You have Black Friday followed by Cyber Monday. If you guys want to purchase anything, okay online just wait till november black friday you can purchase a software package for i think half the price okay just around the corner just around the corner guys and then what do you say to your clients your client wants to buy something you say well you know what do me a favor delay wait till black friday come around the corner and you know what your client will say to you, you know what geez but i didn't think about that wow you know okay i didn't think about this maybe i should just wait and then usually the sweaty mouth. Oh, yeah. And then, then you start the upsell, right? <laughs> you start the upsell. <coughs> but John, now to, to, to Owen's point earlier, why is this happening? You can see here, like the, and, and yeah, if there's too much mess, there's a little eyeball here and you can hide things. Okay, so you can actually, you can hide them. <laughs> it's busy. So you can hide them. Okay. No, but that's, guys, but that's why we're here. We're in a master class, right? This is a master class, not for sissies. Okay? Not, it's not for sissies. This is a master class. I can tell you now. I do this all the time. But my, my, guys, my job is to make you savvy. Okay? I need to make you savvy. No, but this is, this, this is master class, guys. Welcome. Okay? Welcome. This is master class. We've got to become savvy. But now, more to Owen's point. Why? Why did, these, uh, why did gold do so well? Okay, so you can see, if I zoom out, right, if I zoom out and um, I can actually get more data on gold than I can, or gold price in dollars than I can in um, this one that I'm in right now. So let's maybe do that. XAU USD. Okay, so we go gold. Okay, now I'll check what's happening here, guys. So there, there was the big bubble in gold that we all got caught up in. Okay, the 2012 bubble. Okay, where gold was going to... Uh, 
$2,000 an ounce, just shy of $2,000 an ounce. We all remember that, eh? And guys are on the news cl- claiming, yo, gold's going to $5,000 an ounce, uh, 100000 it was like Bitcoin, okay? But then what happened is the market sort of hit just under $2,000 an ounce, sold off aggressively, came back up, and never actually made higher highs. Can you see that? It never actually broke out above that high, okay? It never actually broke out. Well, you must also understand that, you know, there's two sides to every transaction, okay? And this is something you're going to learn in the masterclass when you dig deeper into, like, market pricing, right? There's two sides to every equation or two sides to every transaction. There's a buyer and there's a seller. There's a willing buyer and a willing seller, okay? There's a willing buyer. Well, yeah, it used to be. Now there's just a buyer because the, the central banks are just buying everything, right? And selling everything. They, they have... They've monetized their balance sheets and weaponized their balance sheets to literally suppress real assets like property and gold, okay, and inflate or and and inflate speculative assets like um, uh, businesses and uh, you know uh, the the stock market basically. And I mean it's so hectic that like you know in Japan, the Japanese central bank is literally buying ETFs to try and artificially create what they call a wealth effect. Okay, but the problem with the wealth effect is it's only a wealth effect if you have wealth. <laughs> mm. only have a, it's only a wealth effect if you have wealth. So the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer, and uh, the, that divide between class, so this idea of class warfare, and for me that's the big sort of risk for us mm. in South Africa, but more for globally. This global, I mean, you're seeing this populism uprise. That's no coincidence. There's going to be a big sort of disconnect or a breaking point in terms of class Warfare, the haves versus the have nots. The have nots that. That's it. And you know what? Marry it, Antoinette. Let yeah, them I'll eat cake. No. Let them eat cake, bro. Eat cake. Sorry. You can take your yeah. cake. I'm coming for, the, I want the power. I'm more, more of me than there are of you. And that's why people are getting sort of really scared. Ooh, and I think scary. that's a scary thing for us. Okay. And I think I'll maybe end off of, on, on something that I feel we can maybe as a country like try and, you know, manifest through you know visualization okay but i have got a, a thought on that and I, I maybe want to leave you with with that thought but so 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 this this is the reality right gold has been uh in in a in a, in a bull market okay gold isn't going to do so well okay because it's, it's a fear asset right it's a flight to safety it's a risk off okay but now all of a sudden we're seeing for the past you know what's that 2013 to 2018, so five years, it's been, you know, pretty much a dog's breakfast, right? Not much happening. Not much happening. But all of a sudden now, it's broken out. It's gone higher than its previous highs. Can you see that? That's what we call a breakout. Broken out above its previous highs. And it, else is going but that's the fear play. So that's the fear play. So on fear, fund managers are saying, you know what, gold, uh, it's a safe haven. It's an inflation hedge. It, it is an appreciating asset in, in times of um, uncertainty and they have started loading up and they have started loading up. Could it go higher? Certainly. If, if fear creeps into the system where things get... Should be buying resources, uh, you should be probably be buying miners. Miners. Resources is a very broad... So resources, in resources gets thrown in stuff like iron ore and copper and, you know, that's, that's as those are assets that rely on a grow, growing economy or a booming economy, a demand economy, right? China is uh, slowing down. China are over-indebted. We talk, there's talks about hard landings and soft landings and what have you. China will still grow, but the demand side of the equation is not necessarily going to be there. Um, from a gold perspective, please don't go tell your clients all now to go buy gold, okay? We might be in another situation where, you know, for the next five years, you know, gold yeah. does its thing, okay? And, you know, we have to just and wait. It's and, and it's expensive relative in rands. It's expensive. If you've got it, hold it. If you've got it. It's a, sometimes it's a little bit just, it's a little bit too late. But what can we buy now? What can, no, there are people buying. But, that, but the risk is when you're buying something like gold, mm. there, it's and Bitcoin, okay? It's the lesser fool theory or the greater fool theory. I beg your pardon. You actually have to pass your asset on to a greater fool. Okay? <laughs> That's it. It's the greater fool theory. You have to find someone dumb enough to take your asset at a premium to what you paid. Luckily, you know, in the stock market, we have a clearing mechanism where 
People say, yeah, look, I'm happy to buy at this price, I'm happy to sell at this, or sell at this price, buy at this price. Sorry, my dyslexia is just kicking in there for a second. Happens all the time. <laughs> and it's, a, it's very painful. But, but that, that's the reality, right? So, um, where to from here? Where to from here? We can see this fear in the market. Gold is rallying. What's happening further to gold rallying? If we go back to uh, this little purple line over here, uh, this little uh, orange guy over here, what's happened to the rand? Oh, the rand is also starting to appreciate, no pun intended, the fear. Okay, there's the rand. The rand is weakening. Okay, so in a situation where the rand is weakening, what do investors are for? Okay, they were going to go offshore. You know what, guys? Nine out of ten times in investing, your initial impulse is probably the wrong impulse. Okay, and this is something that you must sort of say to your clients. Your initial impulse when it comes to investing is sometimes the wrong impulse. Okay, unless you're early. Unless you sort of what, what we call ahead of the curve, then your initial impulse could be the right impulse. Okay, but if you're making your decisions based off of what's already happened in the market, it might be too late. Too late. Okay, unless things get a hell of a lot more in one way or the other. Okay, gets a hell of a lot better or a hell of a lot worse. Then you you still be okay because you can make money in that space. Like Bitcoin, it got a hell of a lot better. Okay, we thought it was it, we thought it was expensive at three thousand, it went to just under twenty thousand. Okay, but it also had its. Have you got Bitcoin? I don't. I don't. I can't. Uh, I, yeah, I, I don't. I don't. I wish I did. Okay. I'll be honest. Well, keep it. Mm -hmm. Sit on it. Okay. Lynette, just sit on it. Sit on it. Sit on it. Sit on it. But guys, so now, 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 what's the initial impulse? Rand goes to 15. Yeah, I need to go offshore. Okay. What's the opposite of that? Well, what's the opposite yeah, of going? Yeah. What's the opposite of going offshore? Bye. Staying onshore. <laughs> Simple. It's the, it's the antonym. Go offshore. Stay onshore. Well, now where do I go? Where do I go? Where do I go? Oh, you, 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 you're right. Not shorting the rand. Not shorting the rand. I actually need to buy the rand. Okay. I need to buy the rand. But do I buy the rand here? No. Where do I buy the rand? This is not a. This is not a trading recommendation. And, and you're going to hear, you're going to hear a different, full disclaimer, full disclosure, you're going to hear a different view on Tuesday. And I'm not saying my view is right, and I'm not saying their view is right. But mark my words, you will hear a different view on Thursday. You're going to hear a much more optimistic view. Okay, and that's, and, and that's no, they, but they have to, but also they're looking at the future through the context of what I've shown you. Okay, growth. They're looking at the future through growth. They know that, you know, Based on the economic fundamentals, okay, of birth rates and technology and enabling, unlocking capacity, people going onto solar and basically feeding into the grid, and it, it is, it's a bright future. So the long term, it, the, is long, right. gosh, the long term the is going to be phenomenal, phenomenal. But right Again. now, we have to deal with the with the shitstorm, okay, yeah, of what our clients are seeing in the news, okay. And that's global. That's no. global. Mm. It's not South Africa. It's global. But we need to deal with the shitstorm. What our clients are, are sitting with right now. And sadly, we need to deal with pensioners. We need to deal with people that are drawing a monthly income. Where's okay. Where's the answer? So don't go offshore. Okay. You're late. You're late to go offshore. The guys that went offshore a year ago are smiling. Okay. Well, maybe not. The rand's been actually quite um, mm -hmm. all over the place. Mm -hmm. Well, a, a year ago, maybe at you know 11 rand 70, peak romaphoria. Great time to go yeah, offshore. Uh, yeah, look, uh, the, the, the dollar on an asset swap, the Rand dollar exchange makes big, big difference. Sure, but, but the asset has the same characteristics, right? <sighs> it, yeah, it depends, eh? But we'll unpack that. We'll unpack that. We'll unpack that. So now I say to you, like your first impulse, obviously, sometimes, sometimes the wrong impulse. I mean, like, has anyone ever said that to you? Your first impulse in investing could be the wrong impulse. But we've always got to ask why. Did something happen? How? And, and what to do about it now? Okay, so now what do we do? It's happened. Clients are coming to us and they're saying, geez, I want to buy gold, I want to go offshore, all of this, dun, 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 dun. You say, whoa, 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 okay, it's happened. Come to the next master It's happened. It's, it's happened. Now, let, 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 me, let me throw something to you. Everyone's saying go offshore. I'm saying to you, your first impulse could be the wrong impulse. Why not you? And, and sometimes it's the right impulse, but you have to know. Yeah, you have to have looked at some graphs and read and understood and spent some time with the stuff, okay? On visual capital. Visual capital is nice, it's pictures. Actually, yeah, it tells a wonderful story. So do that, okay? 
Um, don't go offshore, come onshore. Buy rounds. So you sound crazy. You want me to buy, you want me to invest in South Africa, you want me to buy rounds. What about the downgrade? What about all these things? And, 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 all this negativity, negativity. So I'm going to show you something. Look at this. Okay, so this is ZA10Y. ZA10Y is like my go to. Okay? It's my go to. ZA10Y is my bonds. It's my bonds. It's my, the yield on my 10 year government bond. Okay, boom. When I click on that, okay, what am I seeing here? This is a percentage, okay? This is a percentage. This is not percentage growth. That's percentage growth. If I click here, that's percentage growth. If I click on this little log, it's going to tell me the number 9.09. .09. So that 9.09 .09 is quite significant. What is that on a 10 year bond? What is that? 9.09. .09. What is that? It's the yield. Yes, it's the coupon. It's the interest, right? It's the interest. So what does that mean? It means that if I go buy this bond, come hell or high water, yeah. I'm going to make 9.09 .09 on the annual. Okay. The risk is, in the short term, we can get downgraded. What will happen if we get downgraded? Okay, the yield in that in instance, now it's going to go up. It's going to go up. Okay. Let's go back to let's go back to Nene Gates, and that's why I love this chart. We can go back to Nene Gates. And we can look. Holy sherbet. Okay. That was Nene Gates. That was Jacob Zuma, peak, peak that Zumification. That is 10.4. Okay, 10.4, and that, that, that is on the, the close, right? If we look at it like this. So why foreigners is dumping up on it? We can chat, we can chat about it, but let's look at this, right? So that is on the close. Oh no, it doesn't, it? Heineken and Ashi will show you. Where are you? Heineken and Ashi. Here we go. Oh no, that's also showing, that's also showing 10.4. Okay, so let's assume. I, don't, I think it could be a little bit higher than that, but, but no, let's look at it as Heineken Ashi. Okay, so this is this is this is basically showing you peak zoomification. Okay, we we pushed our yields to 10.4. Okay, as per this chart, I would imagine it could have gone a bit higher than that. Currently, currently, okay, you are that little white dotted line at the bottom. Okay, currently you are that little white dotted line at the bottom. Okay. Now, can it go there? Back to 10.04. Yes, certainly it can. But look how quickly it stayed. Look how, look how it literally didn't even stay there a day. It stayed there maybe 30 seconds, 30 minutes, okay? And it was back down at under 10. It closed under 10 on the day. What does it mean? It means people with money on the side. A bird in the hand is better than two in the bush, okay? The minute bonds go above double digits, these oaks are saying, gee, like that's money for jam. Government's going to pay me 10% per annum just to park my cash with them. What they'll do is they'll take that, they'll go, so thank you, I'll have some of that. And I'll add that to my portfolio. And it's not one fund manager doing it. It's tons of the buckets. Tons of them. And guess what, guys? You don't have to do it. You sit in a multi-asset income fund, like our diversified. diversified income or Coronation Street income or a BCI um, income fund, okay? Um, you can do incredibly well. Prescient income, another phenomenal income manager. Stand of income, phenomenal income managers. You can do well in these funds because what are these fund managers doing? They are sitting at the sort of front end of the yield curve. So overnight money. Okay, so there's a lot of liquidity. It's literally like deposit money, right? Overnight money. So maybe two years is as far as they go out on the yield curve. The event happens, there's a spike. They go, okay, fine. I'm going to take my two year money and I'm going to sell it. And I'm going to buy 10 year because now I want to add duration to my portfolio. Okay, what I've discussed now is lesson two. Okay, we're going to talk bond pricing dynamics because because this is now something that, that is very important. And we don't have another two hours to discuss it. But that's the that's that's what's going to happen. Can I tell you guys the appreciation right of this bond? Okay, I'll just put it back to percents right, and I'm just going to I'm going to scare you guys now. Okay. The appreciation from buying, okay, literally buying. If I just put a little horizontal line here, if I put a horizontal line there, I'm buying in there, so I want it to sort of start there. Yeah, no? Is it starting there? Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Just give me give one sec to get this. I just want to make this point, okay? Right? That, that there says, that there says, 17.3% minus 17.3%. Okay, so from 
peak Nene, uh, Nene Gate right down to I'd say sort of peak Ramaphoria okay peak Nene to peak Ramaphoria okay this was Ramaphoria March um, 2018 okay this was sort of peak peak Ramaphoria if I'm if I'm right I think mm, I'm right then the rain went to 1170 yeah. yeah so that's peak Ramaphoria now if you had bought bonds on that day at 10.4 you would have got your 10.4 per annum, okay, and you would have got an 18% return from 2015, okay, to 2018. Okay, so you would have got the 10% plus the capital appreciation, okay, capital appreciation. Now, bonds are something that work very differently. If the, if the yield is falling, it means the price is appreciating, okay, because as people that come onto the market demand more bonds, um, that yield actually has to fall because they eat up all the capacity for, for, for the bond, all the, the availability, the supply of the bond at 10.4. And now 10, all the 10.4 bonds are gone, but what's the next big thing? Okay, well, it's 10.3. Oh, 10.3 is gone, 10.2, and so, and so, and so. And then whatever you're left with is what you get, okay? Then you get the appreciation. Then you get the appreciation as those yields, as people start becoming more confident in our economy, they'll start putting more money into our economy, buying more bonds, and slowly but surely that bond will appreciate in value over time. But the point is you lock in the coupon so that it has got value. It's 9% for you currently, 9 point uh, something, right? 9.09, 9.1%. 9 10, 10 year, 10 year. Okay, so that you get, you get whether it's up, down, left, right. Remember, in investing, you make a profit or loss when you sell. You make a profit or loss when you sell, but the asset, the underlying asset will still generate if it's a good asset. It'll still generate a dividend for you, a yield, coupon payment, something. There's something of value that you bought, okay? It's like you're buying a TV, but there's a better TV next month. You know, you're not going like, to throw your TV out and go buy the other TV. You're going to say, well, I can, I can watch TV. I'm going gonna, I'm yeah, gonna to enjoy this. I heard yesterday an uh, analyst saying that while foreigners are dumping a bond, because they don't believe the government is open. Mm. Honestly. Yeah. That's a whole thing. So, so I think they will be, okay? So I'm in a different camp, okay? So I think they will be. And, it's, and, and my feelings are that they're going to have to turn to us, okay, to bail them out, right? And the, the way in which they do that is through prescribed assets, okay? So prescribed assets is something that I believe is going to come, okay? And it's, and, it's, and it's something that I just want to caution you guys about. Your clients are going to start freaking out. They're going to cash out their RA, stop their contributions. And you guys have to be that... You are, as financial planners, you're the last line of defense. But Reg okay? 28. You, but that's what they're going to attack, right? Reg 28. You've got the law, you're the last line of defense. You're going to say, no, but hang on now. Let's look at the facts. And this is my personal opinion. It's, I haven't read in detail in terms of how or what they're going to plan, but this is what I would imagine would happen, right? So they're going to go to a fund manager and say, you know what? You, we, we're changing Reg 28. We need you, you to give us now 20% allocation in your Reg 28 holdings. Fund manager will go like, hi, oh, 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 oh. Okay, I've got compulsory and discretionary money here. They say they're either going to say, "Well, we want it all," or they're going to say, "You know what?" And if that happens, people are going to have to, in their discretionary capacity, start moving out of Reg 28 as, a, as an investment style. So that could be very disruptive. Okay, so I would imagine they would split it and they'd say, "On compulsory money only, because it's pension money, and you're getting you're getting the tax break." And that's why I'd say to you, like uh, uh, prescribed assets is not so bad because you're already getting the tax break. You're getting 40% of your annualized premium in tax relief. So that's like a 40% gain on the money you saved already. It's a 40% gain. It's in the numbers. You don't see it. It comes out in the wash. Okay, But that's in reality. If we really split it, that's what you're getting. You're getting a 40% gain on annualized premium contributed. Okay, And you're getting tax-free growth. And you know what? If we want 20% of the 40% we've been giving you, we can, we can, we can take it. There's, there's precedent for it. Correct, Lynette. It's for the greater good because you know what they're going to do? They're going to take that money and they're going to go to ESCOM. ESCOM is our biggest challenge. And that's why these analysts are saying what they're saying, hey, Owen. Because they're looking at ESCOM, they're looking at the, the, the issue with ESCOM, they're looking at South Africa might go to the IMF for a loan. Now, I've last night, I did some reading on you know IMF loans. That's something you don't want. Okay? That, like, that is something you don't want. So before that happens, the government will look to us, I would imagine. They'll look to us and say, listen, guys, we, we, we've we fucked up, okay? We need you to bail us out. But I think we're good for it. We're good for it. We're good for it, Lynette. And you know what? 
what that will allow to happen, in my personal opinion, you're going to go to Alan Gray, you're going to say to them, okay, listen, come, give a fork over 20%, Papa. They're going to say, okay, fine, but guess what? I have a fiduciary duty to my investors to ensure that their money is spent in the best possible way. Guess what? Guess what? You're not just going to take this money. I'm going to come sit and I want to look at where you're spending this money because I need to report back to my investors. And it's not just going to be Gray that's going to do this. There will be. They will, they will have a seat at the table. And you know, you know what the guys say, no, we've got procurement. Uh, guess what, guys, sorry, I'm looking at these procurement numbers. Um, we actually have an analyst in the sector, and they think you could actually get a better deal by procuring in this area. Okay? Or have you considered this technology? And, and, and. But at least they have a seat at the table, and they get some sort of a veto, sign or uh, voting rights. Exactly okay? And that is, Doug, that is exactly what we need. Accountability to the private sector because it's our money. So, so, so let, let's, let's just run a scenario analysis on this whole uh, junk status. Okay, we run a scenario analysis. We got a junk, I believe firmly, okay, that there's so much demand. There's so, so much demand, okay, for yield worldwide, mm. okay? It's, it's too much. Like, the, the demand is it's immense. And, uh, you know, I can, I can point to something as simple as Europe, right, to explain to you just how crazy the, the appetite is for yield, okay? In Europe, if you look across economies right now, there's probably six give or take on any given day, okay, six economies where their entire yield curve is negative. Mm. So from like the short end to the long end of the curve, you want to put your money with me, you have to pay a coupon. You have to pay interest to keep your money here, okay, yes. in this economy, okay. De Denmark, right, Denmark will give you a mortgage, a 20 to 30 year mortgage at minus 1%. I swear to you, I swear to you, Denmark will give you a mortgage at minus 1%, right? So but you have to be a citizen, right? You have to be a citizen. So, 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 so you know what? The world is completely crazy. Now, if we fall out, what happens is we fall out of the city world bond index, okay? And uh, there will be some force selling on the day, which is, you're going to get that yield spike. This little thing here yeah, is going to shoot up. Okay, I don't know if it will get as far as the red line. Hopefully it, 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 hopefully it does, you know. Because what happens there is those fund managers will say, okay, in this fund, I have to hold quality names, okay, good quality credit. But you know what, I've got this other fund, which is a high yield fund. And guess what? You know, South Africa with all their challenges and whatever, they've got a tax base, they've got a resilient tax base. Who, you know what, these guys are good for it. They pay their tax. They're good for it, okay? they suckers for punishment, right? Lynette they pay their tax. There's no else for them to go. There's, exactly, Lynette, there's no else for, for them. It's an old age, that age old uh, we adage, right? Yeah, yeah. We chip and we are still the glory nation. Absolutely. So, so guys, you're going to see. Yeah, but you see, most of the regions don't. Yeah, but that's my point. The clients won't see it. The clients won't see it. You guys need to be that. You're the last line of defense, right? Your clients don't see it. Your clients just see the news. That's all they're checking right now. And they're freaking out. And you say to a client, now you need to buy bonds. The client will be like, what? Are you mad? I'm not buying bonds. But the reality is, guys, so there will be a rotation out of sovereign, good quality credits, which we currently are now, but they'll just move that book straight onto their high yield book. They'll be like, geez, I'm getting South African now. I'm a high yield book at 10, 11% potentially. Flip, that is a no-brainer. I'll hedge the currency and boom, there we go. And all of a sudden now, that money is just going to go, it's going to go out and back in. Zip, zip. And I imagine it will be so You're not going to get this dip in your diversified income fund. So on that, now the fund managers, like I told you, the fund managers doing the job, Doug. We don't need you to do the job. Fund managers running short duration. So the fund managers saying, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going to take the pain on the downgrade. Okay, I run a diversified portfolio of assets. I have got some 9% nine, 10-year nine, nine credit, but it's not my whole portfolio. 
it's maybe two, three percent of my portfolio. I'm happy to earn that coupon at night. But then, when it goes to 10, 11, I'm, I'm buying that. I'm telling you, I'm buying that because you know what? It makes up a smaller portion of my portfolio. But the attribution to my end value or my growth from that potential 10, 11 percent maybe translates to one basis point. Or, you know, but that's what these fixed incomes work. They work on literally the attribution of like 40 basis points. They're like, yeah, we were able to, to make 40 basis points oh, on this trade. Exactly. Yeah. No, no, but, that, but that's the point. That's how they, and, and the, it's not just one guy doing it. It's everyone's doing it. So I'll be honest with you. I believe there's a perpetual bid on bonds as the fear play. Okay. Because everyone sort of runs into yielding instruments. Okay. The risk is that, you know, we really, we get an IMF loan and we do all these other things. And then, yes, certainly, we become Argentina. Yeah, I don't think, Argentina. I don't think we're Argentina. I don't think we're Brazil. Okay. We, we, oh, look, yeah, but so do they, so do they. But I don't, I just don't think that, um, that it will ever get that bad. Okay. Our society, I think, will step in. I think so. We don't have Argentinas here. We are too useful. We don't have Argentinas and that's it. No, no, look, I, I, I think, I think we, we will we'll muddle through. But the point is now for your clients that are sitting in um, retirement solutions, income funds are where you need to be. You don't necessarily want to expose people to too much volatility. Income funds with exposure to balance funds, but are overweight on income, definitely. And explain to your client, you probably will see capital. You probably so the risk is with multi assets. You know, if the when the world sort of starts to turn, and it will be violent, it's going to be a violent correction, very violent. Okay, you're going to be reporting on balance funds. You know, zero percent over the last five years, negative potentially. That is great if you're paying a recurring premium investment. It's like, come on, guys, this is great. It looks terrible, but guess yeah, what? You 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 don't have the asset. The, your final asset isn't here. It hasn't arrived. Okay, your final retirement asset isn't here. We are still growing the asset. We're building the asset. Okay, we are growing the asset. Okay, we're growing the asset. And guess what? When you have that asset, then we can start really tracking where's the best place to put the money and but for it's now cheap. It's, it's cheap yeah, it's it's cheap cheap correct, correct 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 but it's it's the people's working income now that's the oh, but they they in, we've got it there for income funds that's where they need to be with all the scary stuff okay with all the scary stuff income funds will still pay the income you're still going to get the yield the yield's pretty much guaranteed what the yield is priced at might change so capital volatility might be there, but in income fund, the guys are really, they're running very, very short duration if at, at the moment. So it's like overnight money. All of that in already in there. Uh, they've priced it in. Yeah. We already priced for junk. You can see it here. We priced for junk. Okay. Which is great. Which is, it's not going to kill us. It's not going to kill us. It's going to be a terrible story, but it's not going to kill us. No, that, that was a shock. That was a shock. This is, this is expected, right? This is expected. It's priced in. And I think, you know, if I just maybe, I want to just end off, and I think we've had a good session. Hopefully you guys yes, got some value out of this, right? Awesome, yeah. It's actually a lot more than I thought it would be. I thought it was going to be a little bit more... Balanced fun. Structured. Yeah, yeah, structured. Death, death by PowerPoint. No, this is <laughs> death, is death by PowerPoint. Death, right, so, 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 I just want to leave you with this. <laughs> I, I want to leave you with this thought, eh? Hey? So I want to leave you guys with this thought. So, so this whole idea of um, expropriation without compensation in terms of land rights, okay? I believe that that is potentially the, 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 the thing that can save us. And I'll explain to you why. Okay? This whole idea of lifting the lower class to the middle class. Okay? This idea of lifting the lower class to the middle class. The way in which you can do that very quickly in South Africa is you give the poorest of the poor, NHI. Adrian Gore said it yesterday in his email. NHI won't work for everyone. And that's what I've been saying to people. I've been saying, guys, if you think you can pull off NHI for everyone, you're smoking socks. Okay? I imagine that people that are sort of on the primary care and acute care, potentially on the lower bands, they are the most vulnerable. NHI is for them. And then let them contribute something. Okay? Let them contribute. But the rest of us can sort of carry that. Okay? Maybe, maybe they do a tiered structure then an income-based tier structure in terms of NHI. But the point is, okay, we need to lift these vulnerable people out of their situation of vulnerability. Okay? That's, that, that's that class warfare risk, okay? And it's a very real risk, right? And guess what? 
There's enough fucking money. Okay? There's enough fucking land. I was in Newcastle now. There's land. I can. I was joking. Okay? I stayed in the most beautiful um, uh, place there. And I was joking to the consultant. I phoned her. I said, you know what? I can understand Julius Malema want to expropriate you because it is flipping gorgeous. But there's tracks and tracks and tracks of land. You know what? If you give these people, not everyone, the most vulnerable, the most vulnerable, you give them that land. What it allows them to do and healthcare, and healthcare. You give these people that. All of a sudden, what happens is now they can borrow. They can go to a bank and say, you know what? I've got equity. I've got something that I can put up as collateral. Okay? They can borrow. And what can they do? They can borrow and they can go and they can buy seeds. And they can buy plows. And, and they can start. And they can send their children to school. And they can start paying for electricity because now all of a sudden they've got something that they are working with, right? They've got something that, that has value, that is appreciating with value over time. It, be done I, it has to be done, Doug. If it doesn't be if it's if it doesn't get done, I tell you now it will be taken by force. It's the rhetoric. It will be taken by force. Guys, there's enough land. I'm telling you now. We just need to learn to share. And we need to we just need to learn. We need to appreciate that we're all South Africans. We're all Africans. This is the country of my birth. Visualization part. Yeah. Visualization. So, so, no, so I'll maybe end off on visualization. But that, that's just my message for you, right? Is that it, it can be fixed, but we need radical ideas and radical action, okay, to get it over the line. But it can. We've got, we've got enough supply. There's enough for everyone, actually. There is plenty. And it doesn't have to be completely socialist, okay? It can be pseudo-socialist. We, we can improve. You know, all it takes is have some people from Africa, some mates now, some other people, and they've been traveling around and all the costs you've got a gorgeous climate, right? I feel, I'll be, I'm going to say something a bit controversial now, but I can't wait for the Dakar revolution to hit South Africa. All this land, it grows in your backyard, and guess what? It is a booming economy. They are infusing that stuff with everything. No, 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 but you know what? You can actually, you can actually completely, with, with legislation, you can, you can disrupt the farmer, because I can grow it in my backyard. Okay? And I can supply a, a, a distributor or a warehouse and if you start allowing people to run this micro economy around Dacha, okay, my goodness, all of a sudden now I'm getting money for a weed. It grows like a weed. It grows like wildfire. It's not okay, gonna it's not going to cost you anything. Literally, it's not going to cost you anything. And yes, there will always be demand for that heavy chronic that they're growing out in Canada, okay, and in America. And we will have that. We will have these pharmaceutical countries, companies that are growing this stuff in you know, shipping containers, you know, in stacked miles high, you'll have that, okay? But we actually have an opportunity to participate because that plant has just got so much utility yeah. in terms of a food source, yeah. in terms of a, oh man, so I believe you, I believe me, that's my big hope, you know, for, for us to really hit the Dakar revolution and democratize Dakar, democratize bandwidth, democratize uh, land, okay? And, and let's just get on with yeah, it. So it's like we're so close to you. Actually, we so are. Doug, we're on the precipice. We are on the precipice. I'm telling you now. No, you will. Leave him alone. Let him get on with it. The beautiful thing about him is he's, he's credible. He's credible. I can believe him. He might have had his hand in the cookie jar, but you know what? It's fine. Just, just get, get, right. get, give me value for my tax rents. Yeah. Mm. I'm spending so much money on tax. I just want value. I want a police force that is not inept. Yeah, okay? And, in a, in a and bring, bring back some pride back into South Africa. Bring that pride. We, we, we can be a proud nation. He's only manufacturing. I think so. He's, he so is. I just get frustrated because like he's got one hand behind the back and a blindfold and yeah, all this like distraction. Just just but that's exactly you've got to be patient because it's, exactly. it's more complex than you think it is. Yeah, yeah. It's far more complex. 
as soon as like one or two guys throw the chain, that's what the they're, 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 but then you're gonna see the confidence. But you've got to build a watertight case exactly. before yeah. you take the guy to try. Yeah. 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 So so yeah, it's really hard there, I hope. Because, yes, it's, what, what do you need? Just one or two that's high profile, it's in, locked, a deal, sorry for you. And, and then, then you're going to see the money come, guys. Oh, like you know that, 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 that South African generous. businesses are sitting on a, a massive, massive stack of cash. Oh, the locals. The locals. No, we, I'm telling you, we're waiting. So, so guys, it's going to get better. But in the time being, in the time being, right? In, in the time being, just let's just remember, we need to be mindful of the risk. The risk is real, okay? We are going to have a recession within the next two years, I think. Guarantee it. But that's We've it's seen worldwide. the PMIs. It's worldwide. It's a worldwide phenomenon. Wow. It's a worldwide phenomenon, okay? But it allows us as an economy to partake in the China revolution, the India revolution. We grow up a very low base. We can achieve incredible things, guys. We just need to just really just get on with it. Yes, like we've got all the ingredients. We so do, right? We just need a chef to come in our pool together. And, and got, smash it. We have yeah. got the most rainbow nation in the world. Yeah, yeah, you get it right. Yes, we can single digit dollar to the range for you. That would be amazing. Yeah, guys, so so um, I think just on visualization, okay, th this was the last point, okay, and, and something I want to start sort of trialing with you guys because we, we what we've realized is like the, the if the, the so you know, Albert Einstein says, you know, the definition of madness is doing the exact same thing and expecting a different result, okay. So we have been doing the exact same thing in terms of our engagements with our clients and expecting different results. I believe um, that that can be remedied by, and I'm going to sound like a complete kook right now, but by guided visualization and meditation. So you, you, you sit with your clients and you say, you're not going to hypnotize them, okay? But you're going to walk them through scenarios. And you say, listen, I just want you to like humor me for a moment and just close your eyes. And just imagine, I'm going to walk you through the scenario. And the scenario is quite simple. You invest a million rand with me, you're 65, this, this million rand has to last you for the next 30 years, and the market drops. How are you gonna feel? Tell me how you're feeling. What are you gonna, what are you gonna have to stop spending on? What are you gonna have to cut back on? What are, you, what, what, are you gonna still be able to afford your medical aid? Is your medical aid important to you? And you, you start, uh, for me, the risk profile is flawed completely. Okay, it's completely, it's a compliance tick box. I almost feel we need to come up with a framework of guided meditation. Conversation. A conversation, guided meditation with the clients. And you say, listen, I visualize, I want you to visualize this and I want you to try and appreciate that this could be your reality. This could be your reality. If I put you in this portfolio, this could be your reality. But this is where you are currently, where you need to be. And I need to get you from where you are to where you need to be. And in between, we're going to have these periods, right? But I want you to be aware that these periods are coming. So the way I sort of think about this, okay, is you look at our product like the recurring dollar product. For me, I think that product's got incredible utility in terms of allowing clients to create an asset that they may not have already. Okay, so you're democratizing diversification, really, because if you think about it, I read such a beautiful... And I mean, I'm, I'm really going over time now, and I'm taking liberties here. But I feel like, you know, if you if you need to go, you can go, right? But but the, I'll say this. So so, um, Professor Dr. Uh, Adrian Seville, I believe his name is. He's the the head of uh, he's the economist at Canon Asset Managers. Okay. He said this wonderful thing where he basically said, if you if you if you want to sort of get um, I'm paraphrasing, and I'm going to get it completely wrong. But like, if you think of investing in South Africa. Would you ever put all your money in one company, in one share? Would you ever put all your money in NASPERS? Everything. Your, your, your pension, your provident, your RAs, your endowments, your, your cryptocurrency, you put it all in NASPERS. Would you ever do that? No. No, you wouldn't. Why is all your money in South Africa? Why is all your business, why is it all in South Africa? You're not diversified. Okay? You're not diversified. Think of South Africa. If you zoom out, it's like a business. If it goes up, it's, it's working. It's like a ship. If it goes down, it's falling. Adrian Gore said the currency's exchange rate, uh, the country's exchange rate is like a, a country's share price. Okay? He basically says, he, he looks at it like that, and I agree with that. Okay? It is because there's a tremendous amount of value can get, get be unlocked by the bond market appreciating, by um, you know, asset swap. But okay? 
America is a shape for us. America is another shape. Taiwan is another shape. India is another shape. Russia is another shape. Okay? So, so we've got to start thinking beyond our borders. And I, and I think the beautiful thing about offshore diversification is you actually are diversified proper from your country's issues, but also from political risk, right? And we've got a lot of political risk in our, in our business, in our country. There's a lot of political risk, right? Um, and the risk is, you know, we let the wolves loose and they um, completely just, uh, you know, expropriate everything. Okay, we can't do that. We have to do it sensibly. We have to do it with um, planned execution. It needs to be surgical precision that we need to apply to this problem. Because like Julius Malema says, it's a very emotive issue. But it is an issue that we can fix if we can just all agree on how we're going to fix it. And I think they, that, that, that's work, but it's not impossible. Now, the risk is we don't get it right, and they need to expropriate more assets. If you've got assets offshore, it's free from expropriation. But the, the risk about offshore is... There's only one game you can play, and that's equities. And equities comes with considerable volatility. So, again, I've, I would walk clients through this guided visualization of, you know what, you're probably going to hate this investment. It's, it's called priming. You're going to hate me for this investment. You're going to look at it, and you're going to think, I sold you the biggest dud ever. Okay? But guess what? You don't have a dollar asset. You don't have your diversified portfolio. Let's create a dollar asset for you, but let's do it over the long term. And let's do it piecemeal, bit by bit, by bit, by bit, by bit. And you know what? I'll give you a little barometer. If you feel terrible about this investment, and if you feel like you want to fire me and want to hate me, guess what? It's working. It's that uh, example of, you know, turning rock into ore, into steel, into a katana. You literally have to, like, really like put that uh, element through the furnace and then beat the crap out of it and then grind the crap out of it and beat it some more and burn it some more and like really but the point is like if you can just sit over the long term you ha you'll have an asset and that asset will be worth much more than what you contributed to that asset so it's it's Setting your client up for the journey, the roller coaster, have them appreciate the roller coaster and say to them, look, you're probably going to hate it. But you need to hate it because this is the only way you're going to create the asset. And this is the only sensible way to do it. If you take money offshore right now, you're timing markets. And trust me, the pain associated from seeing a million go to 600,000, I'm not saying it's going to happen, okay? That pain is as much as the feeling you feel if you're about to die. You're driving in the car and there's a car that's sort of looking a bit dodgy and it starts veering into your lane and your eyes go big like this and your muscles tense up and you hold your breath and you're like, okay, this is it, I'm going. Uh, that exact same feeling, those exact same responses, muscular, internal, adrenaline, dilation of the pupils happen when you look and you go, holy shit, I've had a million now, 600,000. Okay? And that's where fright, flight or freeze sort of kick in, that animal brain kicks in. Appreciate that that is not comfortable for anyone and 9 out of 10 clients will capitulate. The best way to create an asset is piecemeal. Little by little, bit by bit, and grow it and then protect it once you've created the asset, protect it. And yeah. also you've got to educate your client not to wish on a rainy day. Because that's what they do. They spend their money out in the rain to spend for the new one. So when you want your client to sit back, you cannot go in cash you have to go equities. Otherwise, you, you have to go. Your country back. Yeah. Rather, if you want to do that, then yet, if your client wants to do that, if he wants to play currency, you say to me, you know what? Buy an asset swap. That's currency. But you don't have to send, you don't have to incur extra costs in now sending the money offshore. You pay spreads. I mean, I brought some money back, took an opportunity to bring money back at, at the time, 15.30. Okay? I got 14.90. Because you know what? These dealers at the bank are rogues and thieves. But I'll leave it there. I think we've had a good session. Um, this session will be on YouTube for you to revisit. And um, thank you so much for your participation. Yeah, so we did I'd like to do it on the regular. Okay. I'd like to do it on the regular. Um, okay. No, look, I'd say, I'd say, look, probably, I'd say, at, at worst, at worst, we do it quarterly. Monthly, monthly, fine. Monthly, okay, fine. I would love to do seven o'clock.
in the morning and I'm not a morning person, what are you talking to? <laughs> Well, what, yeah, it so so let, let's let's start off let's start off on, on month month yeah. monthly, okay? Because yeah. I've yeah, I'll be honest, I've been away the whole week, I haven't even looked at a single email. Remember you tried um, to start something like that with us, but it didn't work. But this is oh, but this is it's free for all, yeah. right? Yeah, well, this is great. Okay. Cool, cool, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's my pleasure. And uh, best of luck to you guys out there. I could have a little session with you about a client of mine, but I think you've asked him one of it already. Oh, yeah? Well, that's good. Cool. That's good news.